people. But anyway, when he got to the, to the Marlins, he stood like this. We called him Mongo. His nickname is Mongo because he hit like a freaking caveman. You got me? Now, I'm not saying he's a great hitter, but I'm saying he has exceptional mechanics with great bat speed. The reason he's not going to be a great hitter, or he isn't a great hitter now, is because his owner's telling him to do certain things that he really doesn't want to do. Hit home runs. He wants to be a good hitter first. Now, how many of you are caught in this power thing? Be honest. All of you. Why? You guys have no power. When you go and watch those guys, watch Stanton and those guys hit, they have power, bro. They drop balls 600 feet. Easy. So why don't we teach you guys, why don't you get that mind frame becoming that good hitter first and let the power come to you? You got me? With some of the drills, we'll teach you how to generate power, not try to create power. When you try to create power through the swing, you create a long working around the ball swing. You got me? One more minute, I promise, then we'll go to work. Any questions for that? So go back to the proper sequence of the swing, and then by way of the professional hitter, <laughs> let me rephrase that. When I say professional swing, it really isn't your professional swing, it's your what swing? Natural. Your natural swing. So that's what we mean by that. You got me? Now, when we think about allowing the larger muscle group to, to uh, start the, the smaller ones, it's feet, knee, hips, hands, laps. Everybody says, well, you don't hit with your feet. Yeah, you do. You sure do. You don't hit with your hips. Yeah, you do. You sure do. You don't hit with your knee. Yeah, you do. You sure do. You hit with your hands. Yeah, you do, but you sure don't. You with me? Now watch. What's the first part of that? Feet. Feet. What's the first movement your body makes? What part of the body's moving? Feet. Your, your feet, or your front foot, is specifically for rhythm and timing. That is it. That is it. Because the swing does not start until after your front foot hits the ground. Now a lot of people teach, and again, I'm not saying they're wrong, I just think they're nuts, that your stride creates power. Who's heard it? Sure you have. Well, if the stride creates power, where is your front foot before you start the swing? Where are your hands? They're back. So what part of the body is creating the power of the bat speed first? Let's go bat speed, which equates to more power. Hips. Who said that? Which hip? Back hip. Say it again. Back hip. <laughs> the back hip. You got me? So the front foot, we call it stride separation, which we'll show you today, which is one of the most important things you guys must learn. If my front foot goes for, forward and my hands go back, where is my head? In between what? Your feet. Stand up here, donkey. Guard me. Now, I'm gonna, this is how it works. I want you to guard me like a real one basketball. Stop. Chin over belly button between the balls of the feet. If you watch the major league hitter, they land there. Not only is he going to land there in basketball, he's going to land there in football, and he's going to land there when he hits. Right? We call that dynamic balance point or athletic stance. That's where we got to get you to land. So we got to teach you. You can sit down, big donkey. We got to teach you to land stronger and athletic. Now, here's what I mean. Parents or coaches, how many of you have kids who've had an ear infection? Okay, now, two of my boys did, and it drove me nuts. Did their, was their equilibrium and balance all off? Yes. So what happens is, now I didn't come up with this, I learned this. When I first heard it, I'm like, you're out of your mind, bro. We talk about the load, okay? And keeping your weight back, who's heard that? We want you to keep your weight back, but we want you to keep your weight back with your head on center. So a lot of kids will get here and they'll do, They'll do the stanky leg dance. You got me? Now where's all my weight and where's my head? Now what happens is your head has to get to center before you, you start your swing. That's a fact. You got me? So when you start your swing, where's my head going? Forward. So if my head's moving forward, what's the baseball doing? Moving faster. How many of you have problems hitting pitches away or off-speed pitches, curveballs? We all do. Why? Your head's moving. 
How many of you see the pitch away as being further away than it actually is? None of you? Whatever. <laughs> the reason is, is because your head's moving. So I'm not saying that the load or the weight back is wrong, but how you get to it's going to change your swing. As my front foot goes forward and I create torque, which we're going to show you today, where, where's all my weight? Where's my head? So all my weight's right here. My head's center. Now all I do is bring that glutamus maximus to the ball. That's it. Now, when we say that's it, remember, mechanics are easy to teach. Hitting cannot be taught. Hitting is something you learn. And how do you learn it? Three ways. Say it. Confidence, Confidence. Vision, vision, mental approach. Mental approach. Mental approach is situational, knowing what pitch is coming and on and on and on and on and on. Correct? Confidence is something you've got to tell you every, every day when you get to the yard. I'm the best player out there. Bring this son. I got you. You're going to have to talk yourself into it by telling yourself you're the best player out there every day. Don't tell anybody else because then you'll be an idiot. The key to it is the middle one. Vision. You can't hit what you can't see. And if your head's moving, what's the baseball doing? How many of you played the outfield? How many of you <coughs> have caught fly balls and the ball's jumping like this? Head's moving. You're on your heels. Same thing when you hit. You got me? You with me? So back to the absolutes. Front foot goes forward, knob goes back to the catcher's feet. Here's why. And this is big. There is no such thing as a wrap. I'm sorry, there isn't. Now you can wrap because we're taught to inward turn. You got me? The, when your front foot hits the ground, wherever your knob is at, your barrel has to replace when you start to swing. If my knob goes to the catcher's feet, the end of the bat's going to be right over my bald spot, whether I do it right-handed or left-handed. Is it? That's not a wrap. What you're doing there is you're creating a straight line with your knob. If you create a straight line back and I pull the ball, where's my barrel going? That's called bat lag. Now my hip brings the barrel, bang, and look at the direction of the ball. It's straighter. Why? Because I'm create, creating two straight lines. I know this sounds complicated, it's very easy once we get into it. You got me? This is more for the coaches and parents. You got me, guys? So, the shortest distance between two points is what? There you go. So when you watch Major League hitters, minus Jeter, because he's just a freak and he's got a bad swing that he can just hit, watch their knob and watch the end of their bats right over their ball spot. Probably about 95% of them. Don't take my word for it. Go to the MLB.com and pull up the video. You got me? So, when we learn how to create a straighter line, which is going to create more bat speed, what's that equate to? Hitting balls harder. True? And the goal, guys, is not to hit the ball over the wall. It's to hit the ball through the wall. That's what you have to learn. You got me? You guys ever heard of George Bell? Remember the year McGuire hit, uh, broke up Maris's record? He worked with George, George Bell. You know what George Bell to told him to do? Don't hit it over the wall, hit it through the wall. He had more line drives that year than he had in the previous three. And he broke Maris's record at 72, was it? That? I can't remember. That over. You got me, guys? You with me? So let's go through this, and then we'll go to work. Can you read that for me, please? These absolutes, mom and dad and coaches, again, I'm not saying it's gospel or the Bible or whatever, I shouldn't say that, but anyway, I'm saying it's what every major league hitter does because it's the natural swing. And I believe the whole goal is getting these kids back to the natural swing. Talk me through it, kid. Number one. Anyone wants to go back before going forward? This is big. They, coaches call it a load, trigger, or start. True? What happens is, is you guys load and get your knee over your back foot. Not you, I mean, that's a blanket statement. The majority. When you do that, where's my hip going? Back. Now, when I start my swing, where must my hip go to get my head on center? Forward. Wow. That's head movement. So what we do is, when our load, all we do is we go up against the back foot, not over the back foot. You got me? Number two. As hitters drives forward, hands must move. 
back. Okay, as the hitter strides forward, so it's load, stride forward, hands go back. Now what we mean by that, guys, is don't push your hands back and get into a bar. Now, with the bar, there's a lot of guys in the big leagues who hit with the bar. Ken Griffey Jr. was a phenomenal hitter, was he not? His arm was way out like this. You want to know why he could do that? Because he could. You want to know why they didn't, <coughs> why they didn't change it? There you go, because he's at 19 hitting home runs with his dad. There you go. So why fix something that isn't broken? Now, with you guys, you may not be 6'3 and the most gifted athlete on the planet, which the majority are not. So for those of us who are not superhuman like Mike Stanton and King Griffey Jr., we have to do the little things right. So when you go into cages and do your drills, that drill is teaching you how to do the little things right. You with me? Anybody bored yet? Now watch. Up against, walk away, head dead center. Go ahead. As drag foot lands, head should remain directly in between the feet, also known as center or dynamic balance point. Okay. Center or dynamic balance point. Go to the next one. I've already landed there. As above has happened, the heel must take place in the hand remaining in the back for launching position. Okay. Now watch. I see a lot. <laughs> We have a name for people who land on their toe and hold their heel up. You know what it is too, don't you? But I'm not going to say it. You got me? What happens from that, when I do that, where's, what's it pushing my weight? Where's it, what direction is it pushing my weight? Back. The other thing is it creates a longer swing because before you start your swing, where must your heel go? When it goes down, where's my hip going? Out. You got me? So heel plant, when the foot hits the ground, the knee pinches in, which creates lower body torque. Don't worry, you'll get it, okay? That's called heel plant, heel left. Go ahead. Hitter must take a straight line to the hitting zone, keeping the bat in the hitting area as long as possible. Okay, guys, I know you've heard it. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong. How many of you have heard throw your barrel at the ball? Don't do it. Your barrel doesn't lead to the ball, your knob leads to the ball. You got me? So when you, when you talk about creating that straight line, once I get there, I'm creating that straight line with my, with my knob, not my barrel. My hip is going to deliver my barrel to the ball, which is going to flatten and swing out or make it more what? Level. Or I'm playing with the pitch. You got me? Do me a favor. I know it sounds complicated, but it isn't. You can do this. Trust me, you can. Because some of the kids that I've seen, that he works, uh, where's he at? You guys, you, 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 I haven't seen you guys, who else, who else, who, who else I see yesterday? And you, you guys all do, and you, you guys do the same thing by way of what this guy's teaching. He may, he may verbiage it a little different than I, or maybe even a lot different, but he's still trying to accomplish the same thing. The reason I know that is because I watched your swings. Got me? Next. Uh, hitter should be centered to and through the completion of the swing. So, what happens is, guys, how many times do you see at your level, you see guys do this? All the time. Why? Trying to reach the outside. Huh? Trying to reach the outside. Trying to reach the outside? Yeah, hit the outside. Or your body weight transfers bringing your hands with the swing you're committing your hands to. Soon. So, what we mean, once we get there and we land, the only thing that's moving is our back hip to the ball, but our head stay in center. So our barrel and back hips move to the ball, and our head stay in center. There you go. It's that simple. <laughs> the swing is easy. Again, hitting is hard. You got me? But look at your swing by way of your coaching staff and parents as a tool. If that tool is not going to sharp, you're not going to hit later, I promise you. High school, college was easy for me. Easy, easy, easy. Bring it on the bank. Pro ball is different. I found out who I really was then. You got me? Any questions, parents? Nothing? Any negative, positive? Please be honest with me. I know you have some, sir. No, just uh, the question on the load, you always heard different people talking about it, and I think you were trying to answer it about, you know, the fact to go forward. Huh? Yeah. It seems like there's kind of misconception about what you were talking about, throwing your weight back too far back. Yes, I guess I, my thing is, is whenever I whenever I do these, I always ask the kids to go to MLB and watch the best hitters in the game. It seems I mean, like they stay. They stay center. Right. 
and they stay center because they don't float with the hips. But when you watch their load, coach or dad, both, they do more of a sink load. They don't do the hip load, which is going to force the hip forward to get the head to center. So they sink load and walk into it. And that's what we mean by staying in your legs. So the longer you stay in your legs, the more bat speed you're going to create. Now, one thing before we go, one more thing. How many of you heard, heard this, firm up the front side when you hit? You've never heard it? I've watched some of you. Have you heard it before? You do want to firm up on the front side, but this is reality. The, the professional hitter, about 95% of the time, he'll firm up right at contact. The amateur hitter, about 17 to 22%, where they'll firm up at point of contact. So for you amateur guys, the majority of your swings are going to be taken where you firm up too soon, and where's your barrel? It's way back here. You got me? Then that's called bat drag. That's why you're not maximizing your bat speed. Does that make sense? So here's what, how it actually happened. When I land, I land in the flexion, just like when I'm getting... Stand up one more time, baby. Okay, you see that ceiling fan? Stop it. Jump up and stop it. Try. Just try. Please, just jump. Stop. What's the first thing he does? He gets into his legs. The only way you're going to get up is you have to get into your legs. Now try it like this. There you go. You look really stupid. <laughs> so what, what we're trying to get is once we land and we create that torque and we start the swing, we want the back side to firm the front side up. Not the firm, firm side, not the front side firming up too soon, forcing the back half to stay way behind the swing. Right away, you're going to see a difference in the flight of your ball. Not only that, you're going to, well, obviously, you're, you're going to see a difference. It's going to force your hands in inside the ball, which I'm sure you've heard. But most importantly, it's going to create more basket. You got me? Any questions? So before you leave, leave please grab one of these. Again, guys, it's just information. So, you have this coaching staff right here. Okay? If you go and work with him and he gives you one thing, and then you go work with him and he gives you one thing, I don't mean to point, guys, I'm sorry. And he goes to him, I'm not pointing, he's crazy. <laughs> you go to him and, you, and he gives you one thing and I give you one thing, are you getting better? Don't buy into this bull stuff that these guys are walking around telling you, hey, man, you hit my way. Your way? What the heck are you talking about? Is it really his way? Don't buy into that. Down there we have we do a lot of lessons, but we always tell the kid to go see other people. Why? There you go. If that guy gives you one thing that's going to help you perform a better swim, guess what, kid? We're all with it. You with me, guys? Okay. Any questions? You guys have any questions? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Explain a little more to me on what you mean by firm up. Okay, when you watch a lot of young youth swings, you're going to see this front leg lock up like this. But when they do it, they do it prior to the barrel getting there. So they lock up, which forces that hip away, and that creates that barrel to play away from the body, which makes their levers longer. If you watch the pro hit or the professional hitter, which is the natural swing, when they land, they'll hold flexion, and that back side will firm it up, and their head doesn't go bang. If that makes sense to you. Got me, guys? It's very easy to learn. Trust me. Trust me. My swing now is better than when I was 20, and I'm 53. Because I got in the cages and learned the drills and did all the drills because so it would help me become a better teacher. Here's the other reason why I've done it, and it, be, it kills me. Trust me, because I'm arthritic as all get out. Because you guys are visual learners now. Sorry. When we were young, not, I'm older than you, but when we were young, our dad told us what to do, and you better learn it, guys. Got me? Any questions? Any more questions? Nothing? Please, something? Coach? I, li I like the visual thing that you touched on. Mm -hmm. The last time you touched on uh, Ted, uh, Ted Williams being the only one that said he could see the ball. Yes. I've actually used that. Why can't you guys be that focused visual? Yes. Why can't you be the next Ted Williams? Why can't you be that ultra focused on the ball? I like that. So how do we do that, guys? 
What's the one, the most important muscle group that we never train? Your eyes. <laughs> your eyes, just like Coach said. How many times have you heard your coaches say, keep your, keep your chin and eyes down and keep your head down? How many of you actually do it? Exactly. Why not? When you go and watch the big league hitters hit, watch their chin and eyes. What you guys see is you guys see the before and you see the after. They don't slow it down enough for you to see what's really happening when they get to that baseball. Boom. That's when they go and do all that showtime stuff. You with me? Now listen, they have had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of swings to do what they do. Not everybody in the big leagues, are, they're not all as gifted as you think they are. They're human. Now, you see that monster right there? How many of you heard of Altuve? Have any of you seen him in person? He ain't 5'7", bro. No shot. He's 5'5", five five at best. How about Dustin Pedroia? He's not 5'9", bro. He's 5'7", at best. Maybe 5'8". How do they create so much bat speed? Their back hips. So when you look at Pedroia, does it look like his knees to the ground when he hits? Yeah, it's his lower half. So you don't have to be 6'3", 230 pounds to hit a ball 400 feet, guys, I'm telling you. 300. How much? 300. Ooh. Where's your kid? Boy, he drops that hand on you hard, don't he, bro? Huh? If he turns that backside, gets that knee to the ground, you're going to get lifted up, bro. <laughs> Good luck to you. You got me, guys? So we're going to go in here and I'm going to show you a few drills that will help you, number one, fix the lower half first, or get better at the lower half. The better you get at the lower half, the shorter, more compact swing you're going to create. You got me, guys? There's a thing called connection. Connection is hip and hands work together. When we're taught to throw our hands, our hands go before our hips. Which creates what? A weak swing. A weaker swing. Yes, sir. Bobby, not to open up a whole other can of worms, but you're talking about vision. Uh huh. And you know, these, doesn't matter who's throwing it, the ball's the same size, right? Yes, sir. The guys you work with. Uh huh. Where do, they, where do they try to focus on release point? Because whether it's stretch or whether it's the pitcher or the windup, people get, you know, they're watching all the movement. Uh -huh. They're not picking up the ball until it's halfway home play. Okay, that's a tough one, Dad, because they all have something different. The old, the old teach was look for this window where the release point is. Number one, I don't see a window. Sometimes I wish I could. I don't see a window. But we do pick up release point. Where is he getting the top of his arm swing? Now, the other thing is, is everybody says if you look in the window and you focus in the window, you can pick up the pitch. Whatever. Tell me what pitch I just threw. Change it. The key to it is, is if you follow the ball out of the arm swing, if it's an off-speed pitch, you're going to see the ball go up. Curve ball. You're going to see it go up. The key to it is slowing everything down with my head so I can pick up the spin. Not the pitch. Because a slider spin is different than a fastball spin, correct? A curveball spin is different than a fastball spin, correct? Now, that's why, who, how many of you pitch in here? Have you been taught to change up? That's why it's the best pitch in baseball. Because it has the same fastball spin at a slower speed. Does that make sense to you? So how you do it, there's times if, you're, if you ever get a chance, a lot of the guys, when our pitchers are throwing on the six pack, they just get in there and they track pitches. They don't swing, they're tracking pitches. Now, the first movement I made was tracking the way I was taught, which is wrong. I don't track back to the catcher's mitt because I don't want my head to do what? Move. So the new way we track is we just track to our contact point. Bang. Bang. He's Dominican, he's going to throw it 100 miles an hour with head, so good luck with that. You got me, guys? So our head doesn't move. So when, we, when you're taking uh, BP, you're doing flips, try to pick up the spin. Now, can I show you one visual that will really help you? Can you give me a baseball kid, a real ball? Here. <clears throat> this will blow you away. How many of you are familiar with Don Mattingly? He's your guy. I heard him talk about this. Was he a great hitter? Can you guys scoot in? This is the last thing, and then we'll swing. Please, get in, get in. 
Now, Jason's going to be mad at me, but you know what? I don't care. Everybody see this dot on the top of the ball? How many times have you heard this? Hit the top of the ball or the middle of the baseball? Who's heard it? Now watch. You guys see that dot? It's coming at you. Tell me when you see the dot. Never. Now watch. Where are my right-handed hitters? Okay, you are going to be on this side of the baseball. Where are my left-handed hitters? You're going to be on this side of the baseball. I'll do the lefties first because you guys are goofy. Instead of top, middle, or bottom, you've got to remember it's a round sphere that rotates. There is no top, middle, or bottom. Instead, use your, take your eyes to the inside part of the ball. Now tell me what shape you're going to see being formed here. Who said circle? You're using your eyes. There you go. And how do you learn that? It starts off the tee, which we're going to show you here in a second. So it's not top, middle, or bottom. It's the inside. Can everybody, can you guys see this? Can you see the circle being formed? Pick up the circle. Hit it. Good luck to you. Move on. Go to the next at bat. There you go. Any questions to that? Are you sure? So the key, like Coach said, to have a better vision is slow your head down. Get to center. Leave your head. Let your hip and hands hit. Guys, it isn't easy. Trust me, it is not easy. Hitting is very difficult. You with me? But you've got to remember this. The stuff that these guys give you are little things. Okay, every little thing adds up to one big thing, and that's a better swing. Hitting is something you learn by, number one, rhythm and timing and all that stuff, but putting that swing into the game and getting at bats. There you go. Get at bats. You with me? You learn how to hit by playing the game. Because it's totally different when that donkey over there has that, that Giants uniform on and you're in a Cubs uniform. You got me? Instead of hitting, dad, hitting off dad and mom and BP, that's easy. It's when that guy's bringing that fastball out of the tough and that slider. You got me? So let's go in here and I'm going to show you a couple T drills. Got me? See what I'm saying. We, I know where I'm from. Everybody has to have the newest, latest model of bat. And I tell them, I have one kid who's 11, year old, 11 years old and has 11 bats. 11. He can't hit with all 11 at the same time. <laughs> I love him to death. It's, it's, it's reality. So is it the bat or is it you? Bad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw it. They're too expensive. You got me? Thank you, kid. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show you three drills that will get you started with the lower half. Now, they're going to look really crazy. Now, these are drills that a lot of big league guys do at spring training. Okay, if you ever get the opportunity to go to spring training, try to get into the cages and watch what they do. They do some of the weirdest stuff you've ever seen in your life. I'm telling you. You got me, guys? You guys basically... Trying to be nice. You guys are motor neuron idiots. Meaning every day you go to sleep and wake up, you're a totally different kid. I'm sorry. It is what it is. So you guys have to get back to the stuff that you can do by yourself. Our goal is to teach you how to teach yourself so you leave us alone. Does that make sense? So dad's been working all day. Mom's not in a good mood. They don't want to be messing around with baseball, bro. So if you have this tee and a net in your garage, guess what you can do all winter? Happens all the time. You got me? Now, one other thing. Everybody says the kids in Florida, California, Texas, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Dominican, they have an advantage over us. Well, in a way they do. But there's a lot of guys in the big leagues that are from the Northeast, true or false. So how did they do it? A lot of them had natural ability. A lot of them went to work in their garages or their academies or whatever. You got me? Now, the first one's called the knee lift. Remember, the proper sequence of the swing is what? Feet, knee, hips, hands last. Now, whenever you train the swing, you, cha you train it in reverse order. So we don't strive when we, get, when we start doing our drills. So your first one's going to be called the knee lift. You're going to get to your stride separation. You're going to set your knob. When we say lift, all you're going to do is tell this knee to get to the top of the cage. That's your knee lift. Now, what is that drill teaching your body to do? Lift your knee to the air. Use your back. Use your back hip. Again, you're going to get to stride separation. You're going to set your knob, and you're just going to lift that. 
Now, whenever you use a tee, guys, make sure the ball's coming off the tee, tee height or higher. If it isn't, then that means you are hitting with your hands first. Got me? So what adjustment do you need to make if you're hitting the ball straight to the ground off the tee? I would quit, personally, but go ahead. What adjustment do you need to make? Your hands need to go out. So you start with the what? The feet. We're not moving our feet, pal. Our hips, sorry. Back hip. You got me? Next one's toe drag. You're going to get the stride separation. All you're going to do is tell that hip to drag that foot on its toe and hold it. Now, I know that seems crazy. Whenever you're doing a drill, you're not working the swing, you're working that body what? Who said that? Say it again, you're working that body what? Now, I'm going to show you about three pictures here real, real quick. Who's heard of Curtis Granderson? Look at his back foot. What's he doing? Is he on his toe? Yeah. How about Albert Pujols? Is he on his toe? Mm -hmm. One more. How about Joe Maurer? Is he on his toe? Yeah. Yeah. Now watch. I'm going to show you a two-year-old at T-Ball. Huh. Was his heel lifted on his toe? Was his head center? Huh. That's my son Keaton at two. Before I screwed him up. <laughs> That's a fact. So do you see how the swing is natural? Was that swing just like Mowers and Pujols? There you go. Did you notice how all their lower halves were the exact same? Would you not agree? Got it? Okay, so you have your knee lift and toe drag. Those two drills are specifically designed to teach you how to hit with your hip. Now, if you notice, my front foot does not move. Okay, because what happens with you guys, you guys see those guys on TV and you get out of it with the front hip. So again, the knee lift, hold the front side in flexion, set your knob, just come up with the hip. Toe drag, same thing. Remember, the swing does not start until when? Your foot hits the ground. Set your knob, bring the hip. Got your knee lift, toe drag. Now, I know it looks crazy, but when you see the Stans and the Reyes and the Handler and Ramirez and those guys doing it, does it look crazy then? No. Any questions, mom, dad, coaches? You with me, guys? Now, get this, get this, and, and when you go to MLB.com, you'll see it. 100%, 100% of all major league hitters are non-weight bearing on the backside, meaning they are on their toe, off the ground, or the foot's behind them. How and why? There you go. So once that foot hits the ground, I'm bringing my rear end to that baseball, bang. So I'm transferring my weight the correct way with the backside. Instead of stacking back here, transferring my weight out here by my head. Make sense? You with me? Now, <clears throat> once you get those done, that's knee lift, toe drag. Okay? You're going to do a knee flexion drill where you hold your knee in flexion from stride separation or walk away, and all you're doing is driving your back knee straight to the ground. Holding that front knee in flexion. Here's why. You with me, guys? I can't use this phone. I hate these things. What's his front knee doing? Is it firm or is he in flexion? Who said firm? Do you see any bend there at all in that front knee? You don't see that knee bend right there? Firm. So the back side's going to firm it up to and through the baseball. You got me? And it's an easy teaching. It's something you can learn by yourself. <clears throat> Another drill that we do to, to maintain that flexion and hold our center is we get the stride separation and we pinch our knees in. 
and we just hold and we just throw our hands. What's my head doing? What's my front knee doing? Does it matter how hard we hit it? Are we working on the swing or are we working on that front knee and our holding our center? <clears throat> so what you do is you start from the ground up and work your drills to the hands. Feet, knee, hips, hands, lats. You got me? I gotta show you one more picture. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Mickey Cabrera, what's he leading to the baseball? His barrel or his knob? Huh. Huh. What part of his body is delivering that barrel to the ball? His back hip. You got it, guys? Any questions? Coaches? Dad? Mom? Guys, listen to me. This is stuff that you can do by yourself. You got me? By yourself. Because I know a lot of you are at home doing this. True or false? And I know you're in a classroom with it under the desk. Don't even have to look at it anymore. So think about how much time you spend texting and playing video games, but yet you want to become a better hitter. So why don't you do this? Why don't you take 15, 20, 25, maybe 30 minutes a day off the, off the freaking video game, pack it up and send it back to Japan, and get outside in the garage with your teeth. That way when springtime comes, at least your mechanics are set. Now your timing's going to be off, but that's how you learn rhythm and timing by what? The guy throwing the baseball. And you learn that by getting the bats and putting it all together. But at least your mechanics are going to be better. Can you do that? Sure you can, if you want to. You got me? Any questions? Dads, coaches, dad? Nothing, nothing, no one? Nothing, okay. You got me? So what we're going to do is we're going to spread out. Everybody's going to get to the 